Hey everyone. So I am about to do some keyword research to write an article promoting my NYC photo tours. And I thought it could be fun to take you along, show you how I do it because a, I haven't done a key search tutorial in a while. And they also have a new feature that I want to show you. Key search is my keyword research tool of choice. And if you are brand new to key search, my affiliate link and discount code in the description of this video will get you 30% off. So check that out. But anyway, I want to show you how I do this, show you some new features or one big new feature. Key search has kind of a new look as well right now. So let's dive in. One thing I also want to talk about is the idea of profitability with your content. Many times I think we think about the keywords, what keywords can I ring for? And that can be really, really powerful, especially if you are building traffic that is going to help you get into media buying, let's say, and then all of your content's monetized. Even your informational posts can have affiliate links as well. But I also think we should think about what content will actually help drive sales, whether that is sales of your own products and services or sales for your affiliates. For example, let's say you're thinking about an affiliate to promote. You really want to increase conversions to this affiliate. Think about what blog posts would attract people with their credit card in hand ready to make a purchase. What types of articles will lead people to book tours, to book hotels, to maybe buy a hiking backpack, you know, whatever your niche is, think about the products and services that would benefit your audience. So for an actual example here, that could be, um, the best hiking backpacks for petite women, you know, for really trying to get specific and use those long tail keywords that tend to be easier to rank for. And speaking of long tail keywords, that is the perfect segue into this new feature in key search. So here is just the main dashboard in key search where you can, you know, search a topic. Let's just say NYC travel. Okay. Very broad, very hard to rank for, but you can filter your results. Um, keywords to include, you can um, search for keywords with a specific search volume. One filter that I always use is the score. So maybe you're trying to find keywords that are a little bit easier, maybe with a score of less than 39. If you've never used key search, they have a system where they rate keywords based on difficulty. The lower the number, typically the easier to rank for, though that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg with this. There are other things you want to think about. For instance, typically, if you have a very niche website, you can outrank bigger sites for a topic related to your niche because you've really proven that topic authority. So there are other things to consider, but it still can be a really good starting point for this research. So let's just filter and then you can kind of see keywords that you might want to target. You can even get more specific, like say you are family travel is your niche. You can do something like that. And then the keywords that will come up will be more maybe relevant. Maybe you have an idea of what you, what you want to cover NYC restaurants or, or whatever it is. And you could do that filtering thing. Now I mentioned there is a new feature in key search and that is this deep dive feature. Now what is neat here is it organizes the keywords that come up. Now, like I said, we're doing keyword research for my tour company because going back to that idea of profitability, I want to create a post that will attract people who are looking to book an NYC photo tour, or maybe they don't know that NYC photo tours even exist, but I want to attract people who could be interested in them and put the experiences in front of them. To start, let's do NYC itinerary. Maybe I'm just trying to attract people trying to plan an interesting itinerary for New York City. Now we've got lots of keywords here, but something neat is you have these tabs. So questions, these could be things that you are going to include as a heading, or if you create an FAQ, it can give you some ideas. I mean, this is not incredibly helpful with this particular search. I always like to just go to Google and type in the keyword and see the people also ask um, 
and what questions come up there, that's a good starting point. But anyway, sometimes this tab could be more helpful than other times. You have to, you know, use kind of your common sense there. Same with purchase intent. So purchase intent, going back to before, I was saying attracting people with their credit card in hand, ready to make a purchase. That's where you'll find these keywords. Now it says keywords that include purchase intent phrases such as best, reviews for, pricing, etc. Again, you're gonna have to use your judgment here because best absolutely can be a part of a buyer intent keyword but it doesn't necessarily always have to be. So best three day itinerary in NYC, that's not a buyer intent keyword. That's an informational post. People are looking for help planning an itinerary. It doesn't necessarily mean that people are coming to that article to spend money in that moment. Now, of course, if you're writing that article, you could still include your tour affiliate links and your hotel recommendations with affiliate links, but a more buyer intent keyword would be something like best family-friendly hotels in Manhattan. People searching that are looking to book a hotel. Okay, now let's just come over to this long tail column because this is super helpful. It's gonna automatically pull keywords that will typically be a bit easier to rank for because they're long tail, they are more specific. You'd see it says keywords that include five or more words. So NYC travel is broad. Even NYC family travel is broad, but that best, budget-friendly hotels for families, something like that is gonna be a lot more specific and typically easier to rank for with less competition. So just how we did on that first screen, you could still filter here and you could say, okay, I wanna stick with keywords that are, you know, you don't really have to put the zero here or the one, but we'll just put it. Um, and then the other neat thing that I really like is this domain authority is less than, you could put a score there in the top, however many positions. So maybe you would say, okay, I wanna look at keywords that the domain authority is less than 35 in the top five positions, let's say. And then we can search. And you can see it pulls up some results. Now, what's neat is you can see the ranking pages. This is actually me right here for this keyword, my NYC photo journey site where I promote my tours, where I sell my tours. Um, but it tells you key searches score on the side so you can get an idea there of how hard it might be. But I love this quick visual of the pages that are ranking. So you can quickly see, okay, who is ranking for this keyword? Can I reasonably compete? Um, we've got the monthly search volume. You could see how it trends in terms of how popular that keyword is searched at different times of year. Estimated linking domains needed to rank on the first page, super helpful information, and the average domain authority of the top three results. So you can see as I'm moving through these, it gives you the information as well. So a lot of good information really quickly. And I might start to look at this and say, okay, Maybe I could write a different itinerary post. Obviously, I've already done the four-day one, but maybe I could do like a one-day one or a one-week one. That could be helpful. Let's look at another search. Let's do NYC tours. Maybe someone looking to book a tour. And okay, we can filter. Let's go back to scores under 39, meaning a little bit easier according to key search. Domain authority is a less than, let's say 35 in the top five results. You can see here, one result came up. Now, this is a brand new feature. So it's not always 100% accurate because if we come to that first page and we do NYC tours, okay, let's search that. And then we filter and we say the score is less than 39. This, on the filtering on this page doesn't allow you to do the domain authority thing, but you can see we have this list of keywords with those easier scores according to Key Search. But I did find that as I clicked around, like let's say Brooklyn walking tours, there is a lower DA post in the top five. So I still think it's worth checking that first screen just to really be thorough with your research. But I really do love this deep dive, dive tool as a great starting point. So let's do another search here. Let's say 
NYC anniversary, I get a lot of clients who are booking my photo tours and my photo shoots to celebrate an anniversary. So with this keyword, I'm really speaking directly to my audience. And this is just a little tip as you are choosing keywords and researching keywords, of course, you're researching your niche, but think about your audience, what they would be searching to find the content or the product or the affiliate that you are trying to put in front of them. So let's do our search. All right, so we got a lot of keywords here. And actually, I will say I already rank for this one. Uh, it's one of my more popular posts, gets me a lot of bookings. So again, just going back to that idea of profitability, your blog is a business and you wanna treat it as a business. So, you know, let's filter. Okay, let's say score 239, domain authority less than 35 in the top five. And then we have some keywords. I mean, I actually rank for these. This is really more for a little visual for you guys. Um, you know, one year anniversary wishes. I would search that in Google to see what the intent really was with that keyword, but I have a feeling that it doesn't really have to do with tours in NYC, and it doesn't even have the word NYC there. So people searching one year anniversary wishes probably aren't looking to book an anniversary experience in New York City. So I would skip that one. What is neat though with the filtering, and this is something I've always done, I love it, is you can put like that and filter so that the results all either include NYC or New York. So you're really getting the most accurate keywords populated. Now, before we sign off, I also want to show you another way that I do keyword research. So I love going to competitive analysis, organic keywords, and you can actually enter the URL of a competitor here. So I'll just use um, my other site culture. You could search the entire domain and it will show you the keywords that that website is ranking for. Now you can, you know, change so that it's really showing you the keywords that are on the first page of Google and that are bringing a lot of traffic, have a high monthly search volume. And then you could think, okay, could I write something on this topic too? Remember, you are not copying other people. This is not about plagiarism. It is just about getting ideas that you could potentially rank for that your audience would be interested in. Now, one other thing I just want to mention before we sign off is you also want to source supporting keywords. You're targeting that main keyword, but you also should have supporting keywords in your posts. So make sure you are also creating a list of those keywords and, and incorporating them into your content. And speaking of incorporating them into your content, creating that content. I hope that this gave you a good idea of how to get started with keyword research, how to actually find keywords you can rank for. I know we didn't actually go over what to do with those keywords, how to actually create the post, but I do have a free resource for you in the description of this video. It is a template that's going to help you write an SEO optimized blog post from scratch. So make sure to grab that. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you would like to be notified of future videos, different tutorials, tips, and strategies, all meant to help travel bloggers grow their traffic community and income. Happy blogging.